Welcome to the series. This is where we learn how to build custom agents with latest Langchain version, Langgraph, Langsmith, and Python. In this video, we'll build a new SQL agent, which will answer our questions based on a SQL database, by which I mean not just any specific table, which I have shown before. This one will use the entire database schema, create temporary tables with relationships, create complex queries by joining multiple tables, etc., just to get us the answer we want. We will no longer use the agent executor to build agents. We will use agent creator function instead from Langgraph. We'll use SQL tools built by Langchain community. We will also use our own custom verbose reporting function as we have done before. Additionally, this time we'll set up and use Langsmith for tracing and debugging, and also to bring in ready-made system prompts for our SQL agent. Let's get started. All right, so we are here at our notebook, and this time we're gonna do it in two separate notebooks. One, this first one, we're gonna go ahead and survey our database, which is this guy right here, kinnook.db. So for this, I only need this library here. Let's install that. And now let's get some database set up, let's set up the connectivity and see what kind of tables we have. All right, there you go. Albums, artists, customers, employees, etc., etc. So at this point, let's go ahead and survey a few of the tables that we see here. And to do that, we're going to use ipython.display and the Panda data frame library. Here we're going to use a basic query, select star from customers to see the customers tables content. There you go. This is just for a quick review because these are the tables our agent's going to use. So we're going to have a better idea of uh, what it's actually doing. So as you can see, uh, customer name, first name, last name, company address, city, etc., etc. And this is what the data structure looks like. Now let's go bring in the invoices table. All right, so let's run it again. All right, so this is the invoices table. Some IDs, dates, billing addresses, and most importantly, this is where some uh, money amounts of customer purchases. So this is going to be handy later on. Okay, now let's check out the artists. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, it's a simple table with a whole bunch of artist names and their IDs, etc. Okay, now next, check out the employees table. Okay, so let's run this. All right, look at this. Employee ID, last name, first name, title, reports, date of birth, hire date, etc., etc., country, city, all that. And this is pretty much what the employees table looks like. And last but not least, let's check out the genre table. Okay, so let's run this. All right, another simple table. The reason I'm showing you all these is because our agent will use these tables, the table schema, and it will create relationship between them just to get a combined data out of it. So that being done, now let's move on to our actual agent block. All right, so this is where we're going to create our actual agent, and these are the libraries that are going to be necessary. So I'm just going to install them. And while it's going on, let me show you, this is the entire environment variable setup. This is where I'm setting up the OpenAI key, the Langchain API key, sorry, and Langchain endpoint. And this is where I'm enabling Langsmith tracing v2, setting it to true. And this is going to be our new project name. And uh, all this stuff, uh, they're coming from, actually, the collab gives us a setup where we can keep our secrets here, the API key, whatnot. As you can see here, this is where the uh, Langchain API key coming from, and this is where the OpenAI API key. So right here, we use a collab function called user data, and user data dot get brings us those secret keys, right, and assigns it to them. So let's run that to set up all our environment variables. Once that's done, and by the way. This is the uh, latest Langchain uh, version, 0.3.3, just to make sure we're on the same page that, and all the necessary items are in the bag at the moment. 
So let's look at the model, a simple GPT-40 model using Chat OpenAI from Langchain. And right here, we're going to have to recreate our the DB object, depending on this guy right here, chinook.db. So creating that DB object, and we're going to print out a few things uh, just to see where we are. Okay, uh, so these are the tables that we saw before. But one extra thing you need to keep note of is that uh, the dialect, and it's telling us it's SQLite, SQLite, right? It's a SQLite database, but this dialect variable is going to be very important a little bit later. Just remember this one, okay? So now that our DB object is done already, now let's go bring in our toolkit from Langchain Community. SQL Database Toolkit, we bring that in, and this is where we're gonna pass our DB object and our LLM, or model, to create the toolkit. And this is where we invoke this function, toolkit.getTools, and put everything in this SQL underscore tools variable. So if we print it out, this is what we see. So these are the uh, tools that are given to us by Langchain Community. Let's go one by one, like Query SQL Database Tool, and the description says, input to this tool is a detailed and correct SQL query. Output is a result from the database. Info SQL database, this, is, this takes as an input a comma-separated list of tables. Output is a schema and simple rows of those tables. And uh, list SQL database, this is pretty self-explanatory. It is... Um, just pretty much gives our agent a list of SQL queries. And then query SQL checker tool. This is a sort of like a supervisory tool which uses, which the agent should use to double check the query if the car, before executing the query to make sure it's correct, right? That being done, now let's move to the next step. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and set up the prompt, system prompt mainly. And this time we're bringing in the Langchain Hub. And from the Langchain Hub, we're pulling in this SQL Agent System prompt. And uh, just to show you which values, input variables are required for this prompt, let's just run it to print it out. Okay, there you go, dialect and top K. Now dialect, as we saw before up here, the dialect DB, SQLite, right? So this is the one we're gonna have to Add a value to and top k is pretty much the number of good results we are expecting right for example right here since now we know these uh, input variables so we're gonna create a formatted prompt template by giving these values to those variables dialect we set to sqlite and top k we set to five right so top five results we're expecting all right, so now that this is done, let's move straight to our SQL agent. And this is where our uh, parser utility function is, but we'll get to it in a few minutes. First, uh, let's just run it as is, create our SQL agent by using create react agent. And as an argument, it takes our LLM, which is the model SQL tool that we just created as a state modifier it takes that formatted prompt that we just built, and that would make our SQL agent object. This is where we're going to invoke our SQL agent, and we're going to pass this prompt, list the total sales per country, right? Already, it looks like we're going to need multiple tables, right? So right now, we're just going to print it, the you know result messages as is. Let's see the whole thing, how it comes. Let's run it just to show you the actual structure of the output. Just like on our previous video, it's, it gives us a monstrous uh, output with lots and lots of info. The, this includes the agent's thought process, uh, its internal communication, actions it takes, etc. right? So just for our purpose, we're gonna just bring out the actual answer that we are hoping for, just to separate everything out using this statement here. This means give, uh, get us the last message content. And look at this, it created, an, uh, created a nice little list for us. Here are the total sales per country showing 
the top five countries usa canada france brazil germany yes we did get our answer but the question is we need to know the details what exactly it did to reach this conclusion right so for that disable this enable this basically we're going to call in our parse agent messages this function right here this utility we discussed this in our last video this is something i created so that we get a nice little step-by-step -step answer for what the agent's thought process actions taken internal communication etc right so now we're going to take our entire message and pass it through this parser and let's see what happens this time all right look at that okay so this is our user query and then it decided to use the tool and all the tools you can see it's using and it's actually finding how many tables there are what the schemas of the table look like then it's creating a temporary table um, actually multiple temporary tables with you know uh, internal relationship between them as i you know told you before to get step-by-step -step answers and in the end after the tables are created, these are all temporary tables, it then finally runs a very complex query like this by joining multiple tables and gets, uh, gets this uh, result, this list, and displays nicely for us like this. So this was uh, you know, our parser that gave us, the, gave us the details. Now let's check out what we have since we already set up uh, our Langsmith. So let's see what Langsmith is telling us. All right, so before uh, going to Langsmith, I just wanted to show you this uh, one more time. This is, this is how you set up the Langsmith. That's how you connect uh, Langsmith to your project. Now, be before we go there, I should warn you that uh, Langsmith setup, I mean, this may uh, look simple, but Sometimes it has very hard time connecting to the backend. Uh, after all, it's a remote, uh, you know, service anyway. No matter how many times you set up, how correctly you do it, it will just not connect. I mean, it, it's like at this point, I have to mention this because also Langsmith has a, a limited number of tracing that uh, uh, you know you can do on a monthly basis. And that's the reason I created that uh, custom one so that we don't have to totally depend on this guy, right? I mean, it is very nice, as you can see here, our new SQL agent right here. And this is the last one we just uh, request we just sent, list the total uh, sale per country, blah, blah, blah. And then whatever my function did, it's pretty much did the same thing, just in a you know nicer way. That, you know, it's showing that it's, looking at all the tables then uh, you know it's uh, figuring out the schema and then creating the temp table with foreign key to it connects the employees table to the customer table uh, and then it does uh, you know more queries and then it connects invoices table uh, to the customer table using temporary table creation and then it runs this uh, very complex query asking for uh, top five results limiting to top five results. And uh, once this query is done, it gets this result and it just, in the end, nicely gives us the answer that we just saw here, right here. That being said, let's go ahead and clear this out and bring in, bring in another question for our SQL agent. All right, so this time we're gonna ask, give us a list of uh, top seller artists, right? So let's just go for it. All right. So let's see. It followed the same pattern. Uh, got the schema, and then uh, it got the album table, temporary table created with by connecting to the artists using foreign key. All right, and then it created another temp table with uh, invoices item, invoices items. And it has now two foreign keys connecting two tables. Got some temporary answers, then also another temporary invoice table, some more answers, another temp table. And finally, it ran this extremely complex query to get us this nice little list. Let's check out the Langsmith. 
All right, right here. So let's go and see what this is about. Okay. List the top seller artists, blah, blah, blah. So exactly what we just noticed, all those steps taken, and then using that uh, DB query checker, which, is, which actually verifies whether this query is correct or not. Once again, it's using the checker to verify the queries. Then it's actually composing the query and calling it and getting these answers. And then in the end, it displays the answers nicely for us. So before we finish, let's just get one more question done. Okay. So this time we're going to ask which country's customers spend the most. Okay. So let's run it. All right. Here we go. This time, let's just go straight to Lang Langsmith. All right, which country's customers? So this is our last request. And now let's see. Let's make it a little bit larger. Okay, so once again, it's getting to know the tables available and then the structure, table schema, and then created its own temporary tables with the uh, foreign key connection, relationship between other tables, and ran this complex query and then verified that query with the query checker then finally it ran it and got usa and then the spending total would be 523 and then this gives us the result the country whose customers spend the most in is the usa with the total expenditure of 523 dollars all right so with that we have just finished our building our SQL agent and tested it thoroughly and, and traced the details with Langsmith. And this time we did not use agent executor. We used create react agent from Langgraph. And once again, if you look here, this is the latest version we used, Langchain version 0.3.3. Until next time, thanks for watching.